maybe you've heard a scientist talk about their work and they were very uncertain about what they're saying or they sounded like they weren't really sure about what they were saying. But probably they were just trying to tell you the complete truth because uncertainty has got a very special meaning in science. But to find out about scientific uncertainty, let's go to the source. In this video, we're going to talk about how scientists understand un uncertainty. Let's begin by having a look at the definition. Thank you. Right. Scientific uncertainty generally means that there is a range of possible values within which the true value of the measurement lies. Further research on a topic or theory may reduce the level of uncertainty or the range of possible values. That's a bit of a mouthful and I think it leaves a lot of stuff out, like how do you know when you get the right topic? Yes, quite a lot like your essays really. That was completely uncalled for. I apologise. In any case, you're completely right. That definition leaves out a lot of things about uncertainty which are more concerned with the philosophy of uncertainty and we'll get back to that when I talk to you about the igloo of uncertainty. An igloo? What the hell? That's so random. Well, yes it is because it's philosophy. In any case, can we park that for the moment? Okay, but you still have to go back to the igloo. I promise I'll get back to the igloo. But this time we only talk about uncertainty in science and one aspect in particular that's really important. Measurement uncertainty. Uncertainty and variability. They sound kind of like the same thing, but they are very, very different in science and we need to investigate them separately. So let's say, for argument's sake, we were interested in the length of gum leaves. As you can see, there's lots of differences and variety in the length of the leaves. Why would anyone be interested in the length of leaves? Well, if you were interested in eucalyptus growth, then it might be of great value to you to know about that. Yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> well. Here is a range of leaves. This is a fact. Leaves are different lengths and however much I measure them or how many leaves I measure, their lengths will always vary. This is called variability. Remember how we agreed you could reduce uncertainty by getting more information? That does not apply to variability. You cannot reduce variability. Let's look at the measurement of leaf length. We have the leaf sorted by size so we can say that that one is longer than those to the left but shorter than those to the right. But we are uncertain just how much shorter or longer they are in relation to each other. We can reduce this uncertainty by taking measurements with a ruler. But we still cannot be entirely sure. The measurement can fall between gradations and we can only give the length at the range between those. That is measurement uncertainty. There usually is a range of possible values within which the true value lies. We can take better measurements with a ruler, a caliper, or maybe we can use a microscope. Each time we take a better measurement, uncertainty is reduced, but usually some uncertainty remains. In summary, as we increase the quality of our measurement, uncertainty gets smaller. All this measurement uncertainty soon adds up if you measure lots of things. For example, if you measure the exposure of a wombat to a chemical, there might be a measurement uncertainty in the level of the chemical in the environment, the temperature and acidity of the soil, the age and weight of the wombat, the concentration of the chemical in the wombat's blood and so on. This also applies in cases where what we are measuring is close to what we can detect. In such cases, we can only say that the true value lies between zero and, what, and the limit of what we can measure. If we are absolutely truthful, we can never say that we are, what we are measuring is not present. 
we can only say it's less than the smallest thing we can detect. I will explain this in a future video in more detail. Communicating those uncertainties doesn't mean that the scientists are unsure or trying to hedge their bets. They're just trying to tell you the whole truth. If you ask a scientist, how long is a piece of string? They will say, about that long, but only within the uncertainty of the string measuring apparatus. The truth is really, really important to scientists. That's why they don't get invited to parties. Well, that may be true, but if we, once we know about uncertainty, there will be partying all around. And anyway, you're right to some extent because I think scientists can work on the way they communicate uncertainty and they can do that better. What have we found out today? There are several sources of uncertainty in science. Measurement uncertainty is one of the most important. Variability, on the other hand, describes the range of answers we get when we measure something. And variability cannot be reduced by taking more measurements. Measurement uncertainty means there is a range of possible values within which the true value lies. Measurement uncertainty can be reduced with more or better data. When scientists are qualifying their language, they are telling us what they know and how confident they are in that knowledge. That might be annoying at times, but truth is especially important in science and we should be glad that that is the case. Well, we've come to the end of this video. But I was hoping to hear about Schrodinger's cat. The usual interruption when I'm trying to finish off. In any case, we get to Schrodinger's cat soon. It's a great story and I'm looking forward to that. Till then, see you soon. Remember to like and subscribe. <laughs>